Hey guys, it's Bobby, aka Paginator, and today we are doing a massive mail time haul slash unboxing. We've got bookish stuff, we've got crafty stuff, we've just got stuff. So we're just gonna go from the top down of this pile of packages. I have been out of town for a couple weeks and things piled up at the mail. So this first package comes from Amazon. It is craft supplies. Um, first thing is this empty spritzer bottle. You might be going, huh? It came as a deal with these two packages here. These are the new Distress Mica stains for the Tim Holtz 2023 Halloween collection. And they... Um, are really great to craft with. I especially wanted the color Phantom Mist for a certain project I'm working on. Um, so I've got six colors here and I'll be using those in my junk journaling slash crafting. All right, several more things from Amazon. So this is just gonna be a pattern here. All right, here we've got a packet of little stencils, uh, again for crafting. And this came with a packet of stickers that I don't remember ordering, but apparently I did. So these are just like a packet of like water bottle-ish kind of stickers, but they're all foxes. Here's another one. And I think we've got more stickers in here. Yeah which is the same packet of stickers. Now, I'm confused. I don't remember ordering two of these. There were some Fox themed stickers that I did order two packages of, but this, these were not it. I might have to get on Amazon and do some investigating because I'm confused. We got one more Amazon package. Hopefully the right Fox stickers are in here or I am going to be irritated. Nope, this is some other crafting stuff, some Halloween themed Tim Holtz stuff that I got. Um, there's this book of Halloween stickers, some Halloween ephemera, and background papers. What the heck? These are not the Fox stickers I ordered. I'm so annoyed. <gasps> I want to yell. But before I yell, I need to do some investigating. Um, I'll worry about that later. For now, let's go to this. This is a magazine. It's a Daphne, Daphne's Diary magazine, which is a, like a mixed media slash crafting journaling ish magazine. And what is this front page? Just protection paper? Oh no. It's like a calendar? Yeah. So you could keep track of of everybody you knows birthdays. I have one of these in my classroom and I have all of my students since I started teaching here in Wyoming, they're all on it, um, which is kind of fun to like look at the day and go, oh, I remember that person. As for the magazine, we've got this um, beautiful cover here. It looks like some people sitting on the beach. Gosh, it seems like forever ago, but it wasn't that long ago that I was sitting on a beach. Um, my family went camping and we were right next to this lake and it was so much fun. Um, I'm not going to like page through the whole magazine with you, um, but I'll just show you if something sticks out. This is something fun you can pop out and create with, I'm sure, because they have lots of fun um, things they put in here in addition to the articles and stuff about making and different crafts and things they also include papers for you to work with and sometimes there's pop outs like the thing I just showed you here we've got a little half page with some stickers on it they're all camping themed things binoculars a tent a backpack etc I guess there's some that aren't necessarily camping there's like an ice cream cone and stuff like that Oh, this is cute. There's this thing you can cut out and fold to make an envelope. Nice. I'll take the time to look through this page by page um, on my own when we're off camera because you guys don't need to or probably want to see through the whole dang thing. All right. Up next, I have two bookish boxes. Um, these are boxes that sometimes I will open on camera, sometimes I will not. Uh, we have Book of the Month and Once Upon a Book Club box middle grade. And I think we'll just look at them because... I'm already filming, so might as well. So for book of the month, um, 
how it usually works uh, is that you pick one book, um, you're billed monthly and you get a credit and you use that credit to pick your one book, but then you can add up to four additional ones. They used to have it where you could just add two additional ones for a total of three books, but now you can add up to four more and this time I got a little bit excited. So I have the book for the the pick for the month and three add-ons. I didn't do the full five books, um, but we'll go ahead and pull these out and I will tell you what I got. We'll start with the bookmark. It says my books think I'm cool. My books might think I'm a little bit insane sometimes as well, but that's all right. So official selection for the month is Vampires of El Norte um, by Isabel Canias. It says, as the daughter of a rancher in 1840s Mexico, Nana knows a thing or two about monsters. Her home has long been threatened by tensions with Anglo settlers from the north, but something more sinister lurks near the ranch at night, something that drains men of their blood and leaves them for dead, something that once attacked Nana years, nine years ago. Believing Nana dead, Nestor has been on the run from his grief ever since, moving from ranch to ranch working as a vaquero. But no amount of drink can dispel the night terrors of sharp teeth. No woman can erase his childhood sweetheart from his mind. When the United States invades Mexico in 1846, the two are brought abruptly together on the road to war. Nena as a curandera, a healer striving to prove her worth to her father so that he does not marry her off to a stranger. And Nestor as a member of the auxiliary cavalry of ranchers and vaqueros. But the shock of their reunion and Nana's rage at Nestor for seemingly abandoning her long ago is quickly overshadowed by the appearance of a nightmare made flesh. And unless Nana and Nestor work through their past and face the future together, neither will survive to see the dawn. It just seemed really interesting when I read the description and like, I haven't read much lately especially in the last year or so of like anything with the southwest or or mexico or any of that area of the world so this i, I don't think I, since i read the, the inheritance of orchidea divina that i read anything from that area of the world anyway it should be good. Then I picked out a rom-com by Catherine Center. This is called The Bodyguard. And it says, she's got his back. Hannah Brooks looks more like a kindergarten teacher than someone who could kill you with a corkscrew or a ball point pen or a dinner napkin. But the truth is she's an executive protection agent, AKA bodyguard. She just got hired to protect superstar actor Jack Stapleton from his middle-aged corgi breeding stalker. Ew. Stalkers are creepy. He's got her heart. Jack Stapleton's a household name. He's captured by paparazzi on beaches the world over and famous for, among other things, rising out of the waves in all manner of clingy board shorts and glistening like a Roman deity. But a few years back, in the wake of a family tragedy, he dropped from the public eye and went off the grid. They've got a secret. When Jack's mom gets sick, he goes home to the family's Texas ranch to help out. Only one catch, he doesn't want his family to know about his stalker or the bodyguard thing. And so Hannah, against her will and better judgment, finds herself pretending to be Jack's girlfriend as cover, even though her ex says no one will believe it. What could possibly go wrong? Hannah hardly believes it herself, but the more time she spends with Jack, the more real it all starts to seem. And therein lies the heartbreak, because it's easy for Hannah to protect Jack, but protecting her own long neglected heart, that's the hardest thing she's ever done. A fake dating trope. Always a fan of those. All right, the other two books I got are by the same author. Um, last month I got The Only One Left by Riley Sager and I loved that book and enjoyed it so much that I decided to get two more by him. So we have Final Girls and I've heard a lot of people talking about this one. Um, it's been a while ago though and I, I remember some people liked it and some people were iffy but I'm gonna judge for myself. Um, this says, first there were three, then there were two, can there only ever be one final girl? Ten years ago, college student Quincy Carpenter went on vacation with five friends and came back alone, the only survivor of a horror movie scale massacre. In an instant, she became a member of a club no one wants to belong to, a group of similar survivors known in the press as the final girls. Lisa, who lost nine sorority sisters to a college dropout's knife. Sam, who went up against a sack man during her shift at the Nightlight Inn. And now Quincy, who ran bleeding through the woods to escape Pine Cottage and a man she refers to only as him. 
The three girls are all attempting to put their nightmares behind them and with that no one and with that one another. Despite the media's attempts, they never meet. Now Quincy is doing well, maybe even great thanks to her Xanax prescription. She has a caring almost fiance, Jeff, a popular baking blog. Something just fell off my shelf. Excuse me. Um, let's see, Poppy Baking Blog, a beautiful apartment, and a therapeutic presence in Coop, the police officer who saved her life all those years ago. Her memory won't even allow her to recall the events of that night. The past is in the past. That is until Lisa, the first final girl, is found dead in her bathtub, wrist slit, and Sam, the second, appears on Quincy's doorstep. Blowing through Quincy's life like a whirlwind, Sam seems intent on making Quincy relieve the past with increasingly dire consequences, all of which makes Quincy question why Sam has, has sought her out. And when new details about Lisa's death come to light, Quincy's life becomes erased against time as she tries to unravel Sam's truths from her lies, evade the police and hungry reporters, and most crucially remember what really happened at Pine Cottage before what was started 10 years ago is finished. So this should be interesting. As I said, I really enjoyed the first Riley Sager book that I read. Um, and then we have the other one that I picked out, which is Survive the Night. This one tells us, it's November 1991. Nirvana's in the tape deck, George H.W. Bush is in the White House, and movie-obsessed college student Charlie Jordan is in a car with a man who might be a serial killer. Josh Baxter, the man behind the wheel, is a virtual stranger to Charlie. They met at the campus ride board, each looking to share the long drive home to Ohio. I remember ride boards. Such were the days. <laughs> they probably don't do that college ride boards anymore, because, I mean, we're getting smarter about keeping each other safe. Yeah, if you don't have a car and you need to, like, go home for Thanksgiving or something, take a bus. A train, a plane, something. Don't hop in a stranger's car. Okay, back to this book. All right. They met at the campus ride board, each looking to share the long drive home to Ohio. Both have good reasons for wanting to get away. For Charlie, it's guilt and grief over the shocking murder of her best friend, who became the third victim of the man known as the campus killer. For Josh, it's to help care for his sick father, or so he says. The longer she sits in the passenger seat, the more Charlie notices there's something suspicious about Josh, from the holes in his story about his father to how he doesn't want her to see inside the trunk. As they travel an empty, twisty highway in the dead of night, an increasingly anxious Charlie begins to think she's sharing a car with the campus killer. Is Josh truly dangerous, or is Charlie's jittery mistrust merely a figment of her movie-fueled imagination? One thing is certain, Charlie has nowhere to run and no way to call for help. Trapped in the terrifying game of cat and mouse played out on pitch black roads and the neon lit parking lots, Charlie knows the only way to win is survive the night. Um, yeah. I'm scared to read both of these books, but also very excited about it. Okay, last up we have the Once Upon a Middle Grade Book Club box. Um, I, I tried this out and I'm really enjoying it, so I think I'm going to continue it for a le at least a little while. I am always trying to find more middle grade books, especially for my students to read. And this is also just fun because it gives you little presents to open as you read the book. So when I open this box, I am not going to be opening all the presents. I will do that um, as I read. And I'm thinking what I might do is the book from last the last box of this kind is on my TBR for August, right? If I read that in August and there's time, maybe I'll read both of these in August and put them all in it like a vlog together. Like have a double thing where you'll get to see the gifts and stuff. Maybe, I don't know. Um, I need to have my window open for the temperature control but I live on a highway, so my apologies for the vehicle noises if you can hear them. Okay. Um, we have a bookmark with a kindness challenge, which they do every month. This one says, challenge yourself to only use kind words for an entire day. Ooh, that's a good one for me, too. Sometimes it's difficult. Oh, uh, cute. So we have these fun coloring pages that they send that have a quote on them. This one says, there is always more to explore. And they're on nice heavy card stock, so you could use alcohol markers on them and they wouldn't bleed through or that kind of thing. Um, also, this we have this reading adventure passport thing. Um, I have two others of these just because they have sent one in every box. And they're really cute, like a reading record thing. But I am going to be gifting them to my students because I just use my reading bullet journal for that kind of stuff. Here is the book. 
The Adventure Is Now by Jess Redman. Ooh, I love Jess Redman. I've read other stuff by her. She is great. Absolutely love Quintessence by her. That one is a little bit of science fiction, a little bit of magical realism. It's like, mm, so good. Anyway, this one, let's find out what it's about. Sometimes it's hard to be Milton P. Green. He says all the wrong things, his family's falling apart, and everyone at school avoids him because of the super embarrassing bird brain incident. That's in capitals, bird brain incident. But when Milton plays the video game Isle of Wild, he becomes someone else, Seahawk, the brave and brilliant naturalist explorer who conquers danger at every turn. Then Milton's parents ship him off to the remote Lone Island for the summer, where his uncle Evan is an ecologist. The island is chock full of spectacular species, and Milton realizes his chance to become the brave and brilliant naturalist he's always wanted to be, and even meet some fellow explorers. But as it turns out, the future of the Lone Island is in some pretty serious peril, and the only thing that can save it is a field guide full of cryptic clues. If Milton and his new friends are going to protect the island, they'll have to trust one another, find never-before-seen flora and fauna, and embark on a wild and wondrous adventure all their own. This sounds really fun. Um, on the back, it does tell me that there's bonus materials inside, which is fun, too. Let's see. Oh, looks like there's a discussion guide. I don't know if that's the only bonus material, but we'll find out later. And I will just give you a look at um, what the gifts are. Usually there's three. So this one is a box that I'm to open at page 304. Here we have a crinkly package for page 20. And this box for page 103. That's shaking, like making some shaky noises, but I probably shouldn't shake it too hard. Okay, so the packaging has uh, palm trees, which you would expect on an island, insects also expected, and some more botanicals. So, very interesting. Okay, this should be fun. That's going to be it for the video today. Um, yeah. I hope you guys are having a lovely August. Um, my reading so far has been pretty good. I haven't read quite as much as in July, but I've also been really busy the last two weeks. Like, horse shows, rodeos, lots of other stuff going on. Um, so we'll just see how it goes. Let me know in the comments how your August is going, whether reading or otherwise. And we'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful, magical, and bookish day. Happy reading. Adios.